Alright guys, I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, a couple of guys have been asking about how to make money in a handyman business and all of that type of stuff and that conversation has been going on and I'm specifically making this video uh, for a certain friend uh, that a lot of us know that we've met through Facebook. Um, he's been a leader uh, in our field for a long time and uh, uh, I don't want to mention his name just in case this video goes somewhere but uh, you know he's he's a great guy does a really great job on uh, a lot of things but he's got a couple of questions and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I can help uh, you out a little bit um, I certainly don't know everything and I'm just hoping that you can pick one or two things out of this video uh, to be helpful um, and I'm hoping that this video is helpful to some other guys uh, that are up and coming um, and uh, certainly there's other people that have different and more advice than I do uh, but I'm just trying to be a little bit helpful here so I'll just, just jump right in and apologies in advance because this is probably going to be a little bit of a lengthy video. But uh, the idea here uh, is how to run your handyman business. And I thought of a, a few different um, focuses for this video, like why your handyman business is gonna fail, or um, you know how to successfully run a handyman business. And you, you could take it a couple of different ways. You can take this video a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not a negative person, but I'm going to say some negative things in this video um, just to try to, you know, sometimes we need a good slap upside the head and knock some sense into you. So, um, you know, if you're a little bit offended by something that I say in this video, maybe that's a good thing. Um, maybe you'll uh, think about it. Um, I certainly don't mean to step on any toes or hurt anybody's feelings here, but uh, this is going to be real time here. So, um, the first thing, uh, why you might not be successful in this business is because you don't know how to price jobs. And that is the number one question, um, in a certain Facebook group, uh, that we run across is, well, how do I price this job and how do I price that job? And the bottom line is if you don't know how to price a job, you're not going to be successful at that job. Um, a lot of us got into this business uh, coming from construction background, but not business management background. I know that's my case where I've been working in this field for a long time. Um, I'm very experienced in the work that I do, and I'm not so experienced in running the business. And that has been the biggest hurdle uh, to success for me is learning how to manage the business, learning the business side of the business. Uh, I can do I can do the work all day long, uh, but when it comes to actually running the business and running the numbers and how to price things and stuff, there's been some trial and error. Um, there's a there's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, one of the things is how long does the job take. And how much money do you need to make? And that's the big question that we ask when somebody says, well, how do I price this? A uh, pretty common one is um, staining fences. I don't stain fences. I have no idea how to price staining fences. Yeah. But the first thing that you need to ask yourself uh, on a job is how long is this job going to take? And how much money do I need to make? And when you go into a new job that you've never priced before, you need to know full on that you might lose money or you might lose the customer because you priced it way too high. Um, but you're never going to find out uh, which one of those is true because if you lose the customer and you don't do the job, you don't know if you price it too high or if the customer is, a cheap, is too cheap or maybe they just didn't have the money for it or... There could be a million reasons you lose the job that's not you priced it too high. So it's it's really hard to feel and it takes experience and unfortunately experience uh, comes with failure. And uh, 
one of the things uh, as an entrepreneur uh, that you need to learn is um, you're going to have a lot of failures. It's going to happen. Um, you're going to fail, you're going to fail. And it doesn't really matter how many times you failed. What matters is how many times you get back up. Um, so learning how to price jobs is the one of the most important things that you need to do. Um, the next thing that a lot of uh, people in the, in the handyman business do um, is they price jobs hourly and they work hourly and they let their customers know what their hourly rate is. And that's fine if you're just starting out and you make, uh, you're trying to make $35, $45, $55 an hour. You tell a customer, oh, I make, I make $45 an hour. Um, they're going to be fine with that as long as they think that, that you're worth $45 an hour. But the bottom line is eventually you don't want to make $45 an hour. If I made $45 an hour, I might as well go get a job and punch a clock and make $45 an hour. It's not worth the headache and the risk and all of the other things that come along with owning a business to make $45 an hour. When you're first starting out, your first couple of years, that might be what pays your bills. Um, and that might be the way to go. But eventually, it's I mean, that's like grade school stuff, basically. Um, eventually, you got to graduate from that. And once you get to the point where you uh, need to and deserve to make $95 an hour, $100 plus dollars an hour, most of your clientele, if you told them that you make $100 an hour, they're going to laugh because they're going to be super offended that they make $20 an hour and you make $100 an hour and you work, what, from what they can see, you work a lot less hours than they do and make a lot more money. And that's kind of offensive to them because they don't necessarily value you um, as high as you value yourself. And the big problem with that is they don't understand the amount of work that goes into showing up to their house for an hour and you can't explain it to them and you're going to find maybe one in maybe 20 customers that if you told them you make a hundred plus dollars an hour they're going to be wow you're talented not wow i only make 20 dollars an hour and i'm a registered nurse or whatever it is you know so you're going to find very few people that understand the concept of the work uh, that goes into you showing up to their house for one hour. Um, and if all you do is work for those people, then maybe that's fine and maybe that works for you. But the majority of people out there, you're going to need to graduate from working hourly. Now, one of the benefits of working hourly on your fir uh, first couple of jobs and maybe your first couple of years uh, is is kind of a loss meter. In other words, uh, you don't know how to price. We'll use the standing the fence thing um, as an example. Maybe you don't know how to price standing a fence and you tell the customer, well, I'll do it for $45 an hour. Well, then you know that no matter how long it takes you until the customer gets pissed off and draws a line, that you're going to be making $45 an hour to do this. Um, and it's kind of a loss leader, so you know uh, that you're going to be good. Sorry, my uh, my dog over here, we just had surgery, and she uh, is getting really friendly over here. So, um, <clears throat> back on subject here. So, uh, all right, Lucy, go lay down, go lay down, good girl. Um, so you've got to, you know, once you, once you have that experience, when you do those hourly jobs, the thing that you need to learn, uh, isn't how to do the job, um, isn't how long it took you to do the job because, uh, fences are different sizes, fences are different, uh, textures, um, you know, depending on, is it cedar, is it pressure treated? Um, depending on the climate and the humidity of that day, it might take more or less stain. Um, you might have more or less prep work. 
Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into how long this job is going to take you. So what you need to learn uh, is the parameters of how to price the job. In other words, you need to learn to look at a brand new fence that was installed last year. It's pressure treated. It's sanded pretty well. Um, there's not a lot of shrubbery around it. You don't need to do a lot of prep work. You need to learn to be able to look at that job and say, okay, I can price that job lower. And then look at the fence that's been up for 10 years. Uh, it's darkened up pretty well. Uh, it's cedar. It's pretty rough. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, splits and stuff and you gotta work around uh, the fact that the customer never weed wax around the fence um, you need to you got to price that job higher and so you need to learn what the top price and the bottom prices are um, as far as expanding how much money you can make um, and we're in this business to make money if I wasn't in this business to make money then I'd go and get an hourly job and punch a clock for somebody and get rid of all the liability, you know? So you need to learn the parameters of what the customer can afford. Um, if a customer lives in a $600,000 house uh, and just put up a brand new fence last year and they don't want to pay you uh, uh, the premium for staining their fence, uh, then maybe they're a cheap customer and they're just looking for the cheapest guy to do the job and you don't want to work for those people anyway. Um, but if if they live in a lower uh, class area, um, not trying to be derogatory or anything, um, and they just put up a brand new fence, it, maybe they just spent all their money on it and that's not your fault and you don't want that customer until they can afford you. So you tell them what your price is, knowing full well that they might have to save up a little bit of money to be able to pay that bill. Um, so you got you got to learn to read people a little bit when it comes to pricing, um, and then you got to learn not to adjust your pricing uh, for the people that you're working for. If you walk into a house and they don't look like they don't have a lot of money, and you're making the judgment that maybe these people can't afford my services. Uh, don't lower your prices to get in their door. Um, when you're pricing jobs, uh, if you walk into the attitude where I need this work, you're going to lose. Um, last year, I had a little bit during the wintertime. Um, for the first year ever, I had, a, I had a couple of months where I didn't have much going on. And I, I worked around the house I worked around the shop and I didn't lower my prices so I could get some work and pick up and and just go to work um, it, you, you got to have the attitude of there's a certain number that it's not worth getting out of bed for um, you got to have the attitude that well you know at, at that price I'm just gonna stay in bed I'm just gonna stay home it's not worth pulling my truck out of the driveway it's not worth putting my tools in my truck for that amount of money and you got to know what that number is and it's different for different people a different demographic groups uh you know different areas uh different states you know everywhere you go that there's going to be a little bit of a skew but the and and your talent works into that too obviously but so i can't throw out numbers and say well this is the iron rule um but one of the things that might help you a little bit in pricing jobs uh, is looking at the automobile industry. Um, we always want to look at other industries and, and other people and other businesses and see what they did right that worked for them and see what they did wrong that didn't work for them and, and learn the lessons. We, we want to try to learn lessons from other industries. Um, one of the things that the automobile industry does um, in the service uh, area is they have, they have standard book pricing. Um, change out brake pads on this vehicle should take X amount of hours. Well, X amount of hours at your hourly rate of automobile shops charge between 65 and $125 an hour and then upwards of that, obviously, for premiums. But um, right in that range, a lot of shops that I've been to are, you know, 85 95 bucks an hour. So at that rate, this job should take X amount of time. So there's a certain amount of that that goes into... Uh, doing a job and pricing a job but the bottom line is is that when you when you walk into a house a house is you know it's definitely different than a car 
but we can learn those lessons and say, well, changing out a ceiling, ceiling fan um, should take X amount of time. Um, I would say taking, changing out a ceiling fan should take about an hour and a half of on-site time. Uh, some guys are quicker than that, some guys are slower than that, but if I was to come out with a rule, um, th that's about what I would say. It would, should be about an hour and a half. That doesn't mean that's, that's what you call billable hours. Um, billable hours are different um, than actual hours. So if it takes you an hour and a half uh, to do a job and it takes you 20 minutes to get there, uh, while well, that's 40 minutes of unbillable time, it takes you 20 minutes to do the paperwork for the job. Uh, that's 20 minutes of unbillable time. Um, you were at the shop this morning and you, you got your ceiling fan change out bag uh, and loaded up in your truck. Well, maybe that's 10 minutes or depending on how far out of the way you went to your shop, maybe that's 10, 20 minutes of unbillable time. So y you have billable time and you have unbillable time and you've got to work that into your price. You've got to know on average uh, how long the job takes, how long it takes you to be able to do the job, and then you have your other overhead on top of that. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into changing out a ceiling fan. Um, so when you price that, you've got to keep all that in mind. Um, if you if you want a good number um, for changing out a ceiling fan, take your hourly rate that you need to make. Say you decided that um, I can make 65 bucks an hour. Um, and then, you know, pay my overhead and stuff out of that. Well, if you go to a job and tell a customer, I need to make 65 bucks an hour, and it takes you, I have a two hour minimum, and it takes you an hour and a half to change out a ceiling fan. Okay, so I just made $130. Well, $130 doesn't cover the half a day that it take, took you to do the job. It only covered the quarter of a day that you were actually doing the job. You need to make double that. So how do you tell a customer that I need to make $130 an hour? Or maybe it's different for this job than it is for, for a different job. And that's why you don't price jobs per hour because you just gave yourself a ceiling. You just put a cap on the amount of money that you can make in a day. If you say I'm making $65 an hour, then you can only make up to as many hours as you can work that day. And then maybe if you're like me, I don't like to work actual physical on-site working for more than six hours on the average day. I don't have the energy uh, to do that. Um, I want to work about six hours a day. There's other, you know, there's driving, there's paperwork every day, there's all that stuff. So I, I put in more hours than that, but on site actual billable hours, I'm about six hours a day. If I work six hours a day at $65 an hour, I'm gonna be in the poorhouse. But I can't tell my customer that I make $130 an hour. Once you hit that, like I talked about earlier, once you hit that $100 mark, it's gonna be a difficult sell. Uh, so you wanna walk in and say, how much does it cost to change a ceiling fan? Well, I charge $240 to charge change a ceiling fan. What's $240? Well, that's about a half a day. That's a little bit less than a half a day. If I wanna make $500 a day, then $240, that's, that's a fair price for changing out a ceiling fan. That gets me to the job, that gets it done, and when I tell a customer that it's two hundred and forty dollars to change out a ceiling fan, there's no comment because you didn't just tell them that you make a hundred and thirty dollars an hour. Because that's what you're telling them when you price the job hourly. Because all they don't see the amount of time that it took you to get there. They don't see the fact that you drove out of your way to go to the shop this morning and grab that one tool that you need. They don't see all of the other, the paperwork time. They don't see the time that you go to the accountant and spend two hours at the accountant's office every month. They don't see all of that and they don't care about all of that. All they care about is the hour and a half that you were at their house. And that's why pricing hourly doesn't work.